Yeah. Mmm. I never had a two-sided one. So, how y'all feeling? I feel totally inadequate to follow behind Dr. Ray because he said everything I wanted to say. Mine is a, I'm supposed to be the practical application, but my real love is the theological validity to our practical application. Everybody can say, see, look, I'm being practical. But can you, you know, show people the, the plumbing of theological, you know what I'm saying, validity? Uh, so I want to just begin by just trying to say what better place to take the banging theology of kingdom inclusiveness and trace it and, and see how it actually gives us validity to look at subcultural flavors and subcultural groups that are emerging and welcome them into the kingdom so that not only can they be a blessing to us, but as the people of God who've been walking with, them, with Jesus a little longer than them, we become a blessing to them. I, I, I went embarked on a mission to understand does hip hop have any worth to the kingdom, you know? If I were to judge it by the church's response to it, then I would have to say that God, even if he tolerates it, doesn't really like it. I used to think that God felt the way all of the heroes of the faith seemed to feel about it. And so it, was, it bothered me when I don't care how urban the ministry is, they seem distant from a knowledge of hip hop. They seem distant from a knowledge of the people group. At best, they were using hip hop as a way to pacify that group, as a way to say, look, we just sort of want to get you in, but it was really a get you in so that we can take you out. Take you out of what you do and bring you into what we do. The only problem was it wasn't the kingdom that they were bringing us into, it was usually their little function. You know, I was reminded this week that church and the kingdom are not the same thing. And I like the way Dr. Ray uh, Baki was saying that the church is just the agent by which God is introducing people to a king and his kingdom. But we're not the kingdom. That's only good because where I don't find a place in your church, the question is, do I find a place in his kingdom? God is not just renewing people, but since he's king of the universe, he's, re he's renewing all things. I like the way Colossians 1.18 says it. It says Jesus is the head of the church. It goes on to say, but then he rose from the dead, never to go back in the grave, so he's first in everything. And through him, God is reconciling all things back to himself. And that means forms and functions and music and, I mean, all kinds of things. So I envision a rap that's been reconciled to God, a rap that God could play in his iPod, a rap that they can turn it up when the angel's saying, holy, holy, holy. They could have a hip-hop remix to it I just envision that I envision God saying I don't I don't feel like some of the others feel about it I've redeemed even that I started looking and saying man what's the problem why is it that maybe it's the way they understand hip-hop people wait and I don't mean to overemphasize hip-hop because it's so small on the world scale after hearing about all the nations coming here that 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 but the one thing I know is that hip-hop has impacted the world even and so it provides the church a great opportunity to bridge cultures and bridge ethnicities I didn't I didn't do this we don't take pride in it all we know is that hip-hop because of its unique upbringing is has a way of identifying with lower echelons and every race has a group that feels like they're the lower shelf every place in the world has a class of people that feel marginalized if you know anything about hip-hop history it stemmed from a people who felt like they didn't have access to some of the opportunities that mainstream society had we had to fight I remember when you had the wait for a special time of the night to hear your rap you know you will wait with your tape recorder you know what I'm saying press play the little red button and the black button close the door so that you don't have too much you know noise caught in the background just to tape some hip-hop you know sometimes as Christian hip-hop as we feel that in the church it's like we have to wait the fifth Sunday to be able to do something <laughs> you know the youth Sunday and now that youth are getting their own little building off to the side now we don't even get to make it to the, you know, the booming sanctuary, the banging one with all of the real sound system. We offered the youth facility with the one the church used to have when they first started. I'm not mad, I'm just saying. I 
I said to myself, you know, it's funny because the church climate or the church culture is a minority everywhere except in church. You don't just walk to work and be like, oh, the church. Usually, it's, I mean, it's just, quote unquote, we're regular once we leave this building. If you have a suit on and you outside, you think, oh, they must be going to work. You don't think that they're going to church unless it's a Sunday. If they look churchy and it's a day other than Sunday, they look strange. But when you see a dude looking, let's say, take me for instance, this looks like a seven day a week reality for some people. And so you say, man, I see more people who look like me seven days a week than I do people who look like you when you have your Sunday best on, unless they're going to work. And so what I'm trying to figure out is how is it that this majority people cannot be reflected in some of our Binganist church environments? And I think that's because of this lack of understanding of kingdom inclusiveness. So I began to think, man, perhaps because they still think it's a fad. You know, the church usually is a little behind the, the society. Society used to think that rap and hip hop was just a fad. It was something that you were gonna grow out of, and today I run into that all the time. First of all, it's something that we think, okay, just give the kids a little something. One day they'll graduate and wanna hear, you know, same real speakers. And so I thought, say, maybe they think that it's because of their understanding of it as a fad and something you grow out of, that's why they belittle it. Let me tell you what I mean. Again, I'm not, I'm not trying to champion liking hip, the church should like hip hop, that they ought to just bring hip hop into church. What I am saying is, if you understand it correctly, you'll see that hip hop spans a, a 30 year period. That means you have adults who don't wanna be over there in the kid building just to be able to experience what it looks like when God takes over hip hop and makes it the tool of his choice. So what you do is you begin to think, I hate this. So I meet a lady and she says, man, I heard you were gonna be here today. Not, man, praise God, after four years of Bible college, four years of master's work, man, I can't wait to hear what the Lord has to say through you. Usually it's, I, I can't wait for my son to hear you. And so I'm sitting here like, mm, okay, bet. That's what's up. But you know I'm coming from the Bible, right? Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. I can't wait for my son to hear you. And I'm like, no, no, you know, the Bible doesn't speak to youth and adults separately. It speaks to the unified people of God. And so next thing you know, I always find myself like, dad, who do I talk to? But really the Bible and the text is talking to both groups at the same time. And so I find myself saying, man, you know what it is? I, I, you, you think that because hip hop is detected in my bloodstream that I'm kitty. Oh, okay, bet. Well, you know, I want you to know that the, the original cats that sort of sparked it, they're like 50 now. <laughs> a lot of them are 50. And so I, I, I find myself saying, okay, when it's kitty, what it seems to indicate is that it's, you, you think I look like your son rather than your son is looking like me. So they'll say, oh, you look just like my son. I say, no, your son looks like me. We were doing this, you know what I'm saying, when we were your son's age. And now he's doing it because he saw us do it. And so I said, man, we got to help people to broaden their understanding to seeing hip hop as more than just a fad. It's actually a cultural choice that many people adopted so many years ago that now there are many of us that are 30 and above. Now, the only reason why I'm making a big deal about this is because after you live 30 years, you grow out of the childish aspects of hip hop and you're ready now to be an adult who still may have hip hop traits detected. Well, the only thing, reason why the kingdom should care about that is because now, as an adult, you begin to take life seriously. You begin to want to seek and find out what your creator expects of you. And so you ask him, Lord, do you, do you want me to put my do-rag down? Is it, do you have something against do-rags? Lord, do you want my, my, my skull cap, you know what I'm saying, to only come out when it's blistering cold? Or can I wear a skull cap in the summertime? Lord, do you want my pants to not be as baggy or do you want them to fit so perfectly that when I, you know, I have to always, you know what I'm saying, pull them up and, 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 and keep them, t and I don't know some of you are like, oh, see, I, I, he lost me there. I don't want their drawers showing. I'm not talking about drawers showing. I'm talking about baggies. MC Hammer uh, like baggies, but not MC Hammer pants. <laughs> I'd be offended at those too. 
So if God truly is redeeming all things, and if God truly accepts the people who look most distant from him, the thing I like about what he was saying was, you got God making it a, making a point, a whole book that tells you about how God takes the community that had access to God first. It's not that they were more important, it's just that God does things in a certain order. So the Bible says that salvation is for the Jew, then for everybody else, or then for the Greek or the Gentile. Well, once he, used the, he gave it to the Jews, the Jews thought they had a lock on it, like he said. So what ends up happening is, according to Ephesians 2, God had to, through Paul, remind the Gentiles, yo, there was a time when you weren't in as close proximity to the things of God as the Jews were. There was a time when you were far off. There was a time when you weren't in the place where God was doing stuff firsthand. There was a time when you weren't a part of the citizenship of God's people that he chose to do things through first. But now you who were far off have been brought near. Now that's what we're waiting to be facilitators of. The message of, yo, I know out there in the streets you're not hearing a God-oriented, God-valued, kingdom-valued uh, reality, but you who are far off are welcome to come near. That's what we're waiting to hear, and that's what we're ready to, to, to be uh, ambassadors. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, uh, well no, in 2 Corinthians he says, yo, God has made us ministers of reconciliation. It's through us that God is telling the world that it's okay to get close to this God who used to have beef with you. Yeah, it's true, God used to have beef with all of us. But now we are the ones having been reconciled, having been brought back into a proper relationship. We say, yo, God doesn't have beef with you anymore. But what if I do rap music? He doesn't have beef with you anymore. He wants to discuss how that rap music needs to go through a process of transformation so that that rap music is the kind of rap music that sounds like you've been listening to him and not the 50. We get into that place now where some of us, we stopped listening to 50. We started listening to Paul. Some of us, we, started, we stopped listening to Ludacris. We listening to Luke. Some of us, we're not listening to the secular and getting and adopting their views. We're listening to the scriptures. And I'm here to cast your vision. Does the kingdom even want us there? I believe that that's what we just went through, yes. Listen to this. Respect for cultures includes accepting it as equally valid as one's own and an adequate potential vehicle for Christianity. It does not imply the total absence of introduced religious change. I mean, you can introduce change to it. But it includes considering the people of a different culture to be peers, respecting their opinions. It means expecting to find wisdom and insight in people, wanting to learn from them. From a missionary standpoint, love has been easier to come by than respect. But respect is a basic minimum requirement for a change agent says, yo, you know, really it's a matter of respect. It's hard to respect y'all. That's why my message to my generation, my message to my generation is we got to get our weight up. We got to get our spiritual weight up so that, we're, uh, so that we're respectable. A lot of people don't even respect the hip hopper because everything about them is surfacy. And then the internals reveal a commitment to that which is antithetical to Christianity. But that's why we're now preaching Christ and we're teaching Christ, teaching people to embrace. And this is why the church can't scoot us off to the side building. What hip -hop, the hip hop generation doesn't need is to be pacified and taught by an inferior teacher, which usually that's just how it is perceived. Go to the youth pastor and he's usually not as weighty as the senior pastor. Well, you don't want to have to divide us up. You want us exposed to the nooks and crannies, the meat and potatoes, the thickness that the quote-unquote regular saints are getting. Listen to this. There's a difference between making converts and proselytes. Listen to this one. The distinction between convert and proselyte is of fundamental importance. If the first Gentile believers had become proselytes, which means living exactly the style of life of those who brought them to Christ, then they might have become very devout believers, but they would have had virtually no impact on their society. 
they would effectively have been taken out of that society. In fact, it was their task as converts to convert their society, converted in the sense that they had to learn and keep turning their ways of thinking and doing things, which of course were Greek ways of thinking and doing things toward Christ, opening them up to his influence. In this way, a truly Greek, truly Hellenistic type of Christianity was able to emerge. Not only so, but that Hellenistic Christianity was able to penetrate the Hellenistic intellectual and social heritage. Hellenistic thought, Hellenistic social and family life, and Hellenistic civic organization were challenged purged, modified, put to new uses, but from the inside by people whose own inheritance they were. All of that is is weighty talk to say, if we were to just trust Christ and just follow the mold of the, 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 the believer who brought us to Christ, like I used to think, perhaps we'll just throw on our suits, throw on our ties, I know in this, uh, in LA, we were talking about how in LA, it's, it's more common to even see church pastors dress a little more casually, but if you go back on the East, if you're really gonna be taken seriously, you cannot come look at anything remotely like this. So next thing you know, you have to look like them and you have to talk like them and your preaching has to follow their format and you have to hoop like them and you have to have the vibrato that they have. <laughs> but when you don't have all of that, but because we're not proselytes, but we're converts, it means that in whatever context that God met us, we adopt the transcending truths, the truths that don't change no matter what time, what place, what people. We adopt that, place it into us, wrap our arms around it, then let the light of that which is common to us all beam through. So it's like street lights. If you take red, yellow, and green off, you're gonna see nothing but three white light bulbs. It's the, tint on, it's, the, it's the tint that changes what it looks like when that light shines through. I believe that what God wants to do is show you what it looks like when the light of Jesus Christ shines through the tint of different personality, different cultural flavors and dynamics. I believe that. I believe that. This thing is not only about respect, but it's about valuing. Russell Simmons did a survey and found out that the hip-hop generation he targeted ages 13 to 34 said, guess what? They have about a hundred, I mean, excuse me, a trillion dollars worth of spending loot. We want it. We see their economic value. Farrakhan said, give me 50 Cent. Give me the rappers. They're the leaders standing in the gap between the generational divide. They're standing in the gap between the generation that was before them and the generation that's coming up. Give me those leaders. He sees their social value. Visionaries foresee hip-hop inspired houseware, furniture, linens, food, writing instruments, even a special hip-hop DVD section at Best Buy. And they start, look, it says here, uh, they see publicly traded hip-hop companies and even a hip-hop entrepreneur rivaling Ralph Lauren or Oprah Winfrey on our list of the world's richest people. Visionaries foresee the, uh, the value of hip-hop. Then there's the church, at best tolerating it, at best doing a little something for the kids because they deserve a break today. Not cats bringing them in and saying, let's expose you to the weight of the faith, the weight that has stood the test of time. And I'm here to just be a representative of the application of kingdom inclusiveness, not just all ethnicities, but flavors and cultures being welcomed into the heart of what God's doing. I'm gonna end like this. Hip hop is more than a music, more than a fad, like the church is more than the pews and more than a pastor. It's what the streets asked for when they fell through the crack, they felt trapped, hip hop gave them a back door. We were sheep, the streets were like pasture. We could feast on the beat, we liked rap more. At the course of our art, like a craft store. The glory of God's were all of our crafts for. But like any culture, without Christ's glass jaw, either you robbed of his wealth like cash draws. Hip-hop's in a peculiar position. Sides get divided by it like a tool of division. 
It can teach but not free you like a school up in prison. It can feed but it's usually junk food in the kitchen. It's now in a ruler's position. It could go far but the way things are, the fuel's not efficient. Time for the AMBA, SS, ADORs. That's God's ambassadors. I seem to love the culture but I hate most of its ways. I'm supposed to if I say I hope souls can be saved. It can make you gravitate to the foul spots and make it look great to break all of God's shall nots. All of my pals flock to the place where the shells drop. They sell rock and make it look like you're on hell's block. And gals shop just to make mouths drop. It's hard not to watch when you see what these girls rock. And kids are so starstruck. Forget Harvard. They want to be on a show that hooks their car up. And you can hang God up. You'll blow the whole mood. They're going to go boo when his name is brought up. But this is the mission ambassadors on. This Christian is hip and he's ripping though his hazardous form. I'm rapping as long as I can till the chasm is gone. I know a God will put a Lazarus on. Them. It's the A-M-B-A-S-S-A-D-O-R.